and what it means for competition. Cowan's John Blackledge and Bernstein's Mark Mulek uh, join us uh, now. Uh, Mark's on the phone, as you see there. John, let me start with you. You know, let's just actually get to the business itself of TikTok. What are you seeing in terms of uh, daily average users, monthly average users, and how much time people are spending on the platform? Yeah, yeah. So TikTok has over 100 million monthly users in the U.S. The platform more than doubled users uh, since October. Uh, October, Given the rapid user growth, our common proprietary data shows significant user overlap between TikTok and Instagram, Snap, and YouTube. YouTube, uh, For instance, in the second quarter, 39% of respondents in our survey uh, said that they were both Instagram and TikTok users. And TikTok's engagement, uh, David, has been huge. Uh, in, in 2Q, our data shows, and this was surprising, TikTok's 18 to 24-year-old users spent nearly an hour a day on the platform. But there does appear to be room for everyone. Uh, for instance, we saw Instagram and Snap's 2Q usage flat to up slightly. So obviously 2Q was unique with the pandemic and people spending more time at home. Uh, that clearly helped engagement across the board. So as we do move into the back half of this year and into next year, we'll be closely monitoring the engagement across all of these platforms because it is critical for monetization. John, of course, the question becomes if, in fact, it does get shut down in some fashion or other, if the deal that has been negotiated is not approved by the Chinese authorities, you know, who are the beneficiaries? Facebook may sit back and say, hey, don't look at us. But, you know, I've certainly heard from my reporting that early on they were at least in Congress getting people talking about the national security concerns around TikTok. Does Facebook and Instagram benefit if it gets shut down? Uh, totally. All, all of them do. In, uh, Instagram, Snap, uh, YouTube. Um, they, they all benefit. Uh, li like I said, just, uh, you know, kind of in that youngest cohort, age cohort, 18 to 24 year olds that we track, if they're spending an hour on, on, on TikTok and it gets shut down, then, you know, maybe they, they spend more time on, on Instagram or Snap or core Facebook. Um, so yeah, no, cl they clearly benefit it if it's shut down and the stocks will, and, and the stocks will benefit as well. Mark, interestingly, you, you mentioned Facebook as a prime competitor, but I think you see Google YouTube as the most at risk if TikTok U.S. operations stay. Why? Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, it, it's why we use the platforms. If you think about social media, you could break it down even further into, you know, connection versus consumption. And connection is what's quite strong on Facebook and even Instagram, where you have those personal relationships on Snapchat. You're talking to your friends. Uh, when you sit back and you want to be entertained, uh, you know, that consumption, that use case is identical to why we're opening up YouTube and, and watching YouTube. In fact, YouTube launched their own TikTok competitor just last week called Shorts uh, that they're testing out. And, and so in, the other side of the coin here is also how they make money. Uh, and for now, at least TikTok primarily earns their revenues off of brand advertisers, which is also, you know, the primary channel, at least for now, that YouTube makes their money. So consumption-based platforms, in our view, work really, really well to attract brand advertisers. And so... Um, you know, they're competing for the exact same pool of dollars and percentage of user time. 